In the past decade or so, Airbus has slowly overtaken Boeing as the biggest sellers of commercial aircraft on the planet. It may surprise you to know, but the company's remarkable rise has been partly down to a single concept it adopted on its planes almost 40 years ago. A unique, four-decade-old technology able to change the game for Airbus. Can Boeing be able to respond, however? Stay tuned to find out all of the answers and more. Boeing and Airbus are by far the dominant players in the commercial aviation industry in what usually feels like a duopoly, despite the strong growth of Third Force Embraer. For many decades spanning the 1950s to the early 1990s, Boeing was clearly on top of the rest. However, since the turn of the millennium, the trend has slowly begun to change with the tide turning in Airbus's favour. In fact, since 2006, Airbus has received significantly more gross orders for its aircraft than Boeing, receiving almost 20,000 orders compared to Boeing's approximately 17,000. The real turning point for Airbus happened long before the rise of the millennium and was in part due to its adoption of new technologies. Ones such as the fly-by-wire in its very first commercial jet, the A320 in 1987. The introduction of new fuel-efficient planes which made use of composite materials on vital parts of the fuselage also helped boost Airbus's reputation as more than just a competitor to Boeing. Boeing's rather strange decision to greatly overlook the production quality of its planes in favour of profits in the past couple of decades certainly hasn't helped its case either, as it battles with one PR issue after another instead of being able to focus on new innovations. However, in general, Boeing is still the larger company and has sold the most planes. It also has arguably more access to resources than Airbus. So, one could say the company is simply experiencing a lull and that they are still well positioned to make a strong comeback. But the truth is that based on current evidence, no one can really say for sure whether the awaited turning point is coming anytime soon. With the aviation industry expected to be valued at almost $5 trillion by 2040, both Boeing and Airbus know that this is a vital period for their future prospects. Added to this is the considerable amount of the technologies adopted by the current generation of commercial aircraft may become outdated within the next two decades. Thus, whoever is going to come out on top of this battle may have to think outside the box. But what if they don't exactly need to? Innovations like the use of hydrogen fuel, folding wings, sustainable aviation fuel, new engine designs or new lighter materials are commonly discussed as the next big leap for commercial aviation. But there is one innovation from way back in the past which continues to have an effect of a magnitude which most other innovations never able to replicate. This is what Airbus achieved when it introduced a new simple but effective concept an ecosystem which, despite first coming into prominence over three decades ago, has arguably contributed the most to its recent usurping of Boeing's supremacy. It is called cockpit commonality. It might sound a bit simple to you right now, but it's played such an important role for Airbus with its effects still being felt today, probably more than ever. Cockpit commonality is the practice of adopting standardized cockpit designs, controls and systems across different models of aircraft. Both Airbus and Boeing adopt some form of cockpit commonality in their planes, but it is the extent to which Airbus takes this concept that sets it apart from the competition. It is cockpit commonality that poses the greatest risk to Boeing. All of Airbus's aircraft cockpit layouts are modelled after the A320, as the company decided to take its cockpit commonality concept to a whole new level, following the introduction of the digital fly-by-wire controls, identical cockpits and operating procedures to each of the A320 family's variants, the A318, the A319, the A320, and the A321. It wasn't until 1991 with the introduction of the Airbus A340 that the aviation industry really got a glimpse into how far Airbus was willing to go when it came to cockpit commonality. For the first time in history, an aircraft shared a cockpit layout and operational philosophy with an aircraft with a different mission capability, size and configuration. The concept of cockpit commonality brought with it a whole host of advantages which have been felt for decades as Airbus has translated it into its newer, larger planes. However, 
These advantages tend to be somewhat overlooked from the outside. They shouldn't, but we'll get to why in a moment. Airbus not only adopted cockpit commonality from the onset, it prioritized it and made sure it cut across its diverse product line. What it means is that the controls such as side sticks, throttles, flap settings and speed brakes, the main display systems which include the ECAM as well as navigation, weather and terrain displays, the flight control units and even the checklists are identical across the board. The major controls and systems a trained pilot would see in the cockpit of an Airbus A320 are the same as they would see in the cockpit of the much larger A380. But, it's not just the controls in the cockpit that feel similar. The handling characteristics also feel similar regardless of the size of the aircraft type. Boeing has something similar for its 757 and 767 cockpits with the control panels for various systems sharing the same location and appearance. However, the hydraulic system panels in the 757 and 767 are quite different and in general, the cockpit layouts on the aircraft just seem less streamlined when compared to Airbus's planes. Nevertheless, cockpit commonality still exists to a considerable extent in those Boeing planes. They have, however, just been less successful as a selling point when compared to their Airbus counterparts. So, why has the concept worked for Airbus more than it has for Boeing? The answer to that question comes down to the advantages which Airbus's cockpit commonality concept gives to the users of its planes. The similarity within Airbus's cockpits makes flying Airbus aircraft easier for pilots and airlines. For pilots, the main advantage is how easy it is to transition between Airbus planes. A trained Airbus A320 pilot can switch to piloting a much larger A330, A340 or A380 aircraft with just a relatively short and straightforward type rating course called the Cross Crew Qualification Course, one that may only take a few days rather than several weeks. The cockpit commonality on Airbus planes also allows trained pilots to operate a mixed fleet of Airbus aircraft at any time. This means pilots are not only able to transition easily to different Airbus aircraft types, they are also able to operate them whenever their services are needed, if regulations permit. The result of this is a significant increase in pilot productivity as the pilots are made to do less tedious training exercises and can easily swap between mixed fleets which basically makes most Airbus trained pilots perpetually useful for different flying operations. But this advantage isn't felt by pilots alone. In fact, one may say that the biggest beneficiaries of Airbus's commonality concept is actually the airlines. While pilots may jubilate over less training time and the ability to fly planes of different sizes, it's the airlines who pay for these trainings who actually benefit the most, at least financially. Lower training times equals lower training costs, so airlines who use more Airbus planes aren't just saving on crew training costs, but also on time. Additionally, airlines that operate multiple Airbus aircraft families have no major concerns with looking for pilots to suit each aircraft type, since any of their Airbus-trained pilots can easily take the reins when needed. What this means is that more pilots tend to be available for selection in airlines that operate a majority Airbus fleet. And availability almost always equals increased productivity. It also means that the airlines can better schedule aircraft for flights according to passenger bookings on specific routes, which could further result in increased productivity. All of this increased productivity, as well as reduced labor costs, means airlines end up saving hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars per plane each year. These cost-saving advantages have been key to the successes of those airlines who operate a majority or all Airbus fleet. Airlines such as Finnair, SAS and JetBlue have benefited greatly from using Airbus-dominated fleets in their operations. With less time and money spent on training pilots, the airlines have been able to use the freed-up resources to enhance customer experience and expand route networks. Benefits of this kind have ensured that Airbus is able to have a high retention rate for its customers, resulting in a significantly sized customer base made up of loyalists. But it's not just the Airbus loyalists who seem to be benefiting from Airbus's unique cockpit ecosystem. Startup airlines may have also begun to catch on to the potential upsides of operating a majority Airbus fleet. 
The prospects and possibilities for cockpit commonality in the broader aviation industry is just as appealing. It's not just the potential fuel-saving costs of Airbus planes that brings in new airlines for the company. When the Airbus planes also offer the aforementioned benefits of cockpit commonality, startup airlines can easily integrate more aircraft at the same time. This can allow them to be profitable even if they have to offer lower costs to stay competitive with the bigger players in their market. A real-life example of a new airline benefiting from Airbus's cockpit commonality is Taiwan-based Starlux Airlines. Starlux Airlines is an airline that's trying to play against much bigger competition in a country as little as Taiwan. And so, its leadership has had to think outside the box if the company was to succeed. What Starlux did was to adopt an all-Airbus fleet, which includes models such as the A321neo, the A330neo and the A350. This has so far allowed the airline to streamline its pilot training and rapidly scale its operations without the massive costs associated with undergoing such an expansion. In fact, due to the unique onboard services and amenities the airline is able to offer from operational cost savings, it was able to record a net profit in the first half of 2023. Boeing seems to have noticed the importance of high-level cockpit commonality as it has notably contributed to its loss of market share against Airbus. The company now also looks to be moving towards adopting a more streamlined cockpit architecture for future planes. The new 777X cockpit is reportedly being modelled after the 787 Dreamliner, the aircraft whose cockpit Boeing is set to model most of its future aircraft after. However, the 737, which is Boeing's bestseller, may be holding the company back as its systems are rather outdated and distinctly different to other Boeing planes. This means the aircraft manufacturer may have to completely phase out the aircraft type before it can be fully able to achieve cockpit commonality. When or whether they even intend on doing that is anyone's guess. Ultimately, Airbus's early adoption of cockpit commonality looks to have been an absolute masterstroke and highlights the company's incredible foresight in an age where most companies tend to just do what's popular. The various perks of the concept have managed to help Airbus attract customers and then secure their loyalty. They have also helped Airbus's chances of becoming the number one aircraft manufacturer by posing a unique and difficult challenge to Boeing. How much Airbus's peculiar advantage goes on to dictate the future dynamics of commercial aviation is left to be seen, but it's surely set to have a say.